Hey folks, good morning. Good morning. Happy Thursday, December the 14th. Yesterday was Wednesday, that is right. I've got my helper Lily right here next to me, just off screen. She's right here. <laughs> there she is. So, um, I think Facebook was not sending out notifications again, censoring people. That's what they do. No. Um, but that's right. We're on. Um, if you missed part of it, you can go back and watch. All right. We got some jokes. Oh, and you going to come in here for the jokes? Huh? Are you going to come in here for the jokes? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. Ready? Ready. Why are there pop tarts, but no mom tarts? Because of the pastryarchy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even funny. I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. Do another joke. But make Do another joke? Do another joke, but make it better. Yeah, make it better. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Mom will like this one. Maybe. Judy found this. So I got into an argument uh, not long ago. Uh, with another woman, an argument. In the middle of the argument, she goes, "You know what? You're right." That's not even funny. I had no idea what to do next. I did. <laughs> that wasn't better. Uh, okay, I got another one. A chicken joke. Um, do you know that people who take care of chickens are actually chicken tenders? <laughs> <laughs> what? What's that? I love that you were able to pull out the chicken joke. That was good. Yeah, I was set. I, I can do requests. One more? All right. Here we go. Make it, make it hilarious. Okay. Oh, hey, what color is this word up here, Owen? No, no, there we go. <laughs> uh, I've started investing in stocks. Beef, chicken, vegetable. One day I hope to be a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> that was not hilarious. That was kind of funny. I no, got coffee here. Um, I think I saw a small animal. <laughs> We are, uh, you know, we've got this puppy. We're we're puppy training. She's uh, her favorite thing to do is to jump on the table as soon as we leave. She's a bad little girl. Okay, let's do a devotional this morning. Are you ready? Um, we're going to continue kind of talking about. No, we're done with jokes, buddy. Thank you, though. We're gonna do, we're gonna do we're gonna do our devotional. Okay. Okay. Shh, gotta be quiet. Um, this is this is our life. This is where we are. <laughs> uh, we're gonna continue talking about stress. Uh, holiday stress, especially, can be heavy. Um, we know that these uh, this season affects many people in many different ways. So I want to encourage you uh, that whatever whatever you might be walking through, whatever stress you might be dealing with. I challenge you uh, to know uh, that he's still in charge, right? He's still in control. But let's talk about stress for just a second. The key to resisting stress is the very thing that a lot of Christians do the least. Um, I like to read surveys. I like to look at, at uh, study articles and things like that. The Barna Research Group, the Pew Research Group. Uh, there are others, uh, secular groups. Uh, CNN does a lot. Fox does a lot. Um, I like to see research. Um, but often what we see is Christians, the thing they do the least is, is spend time alone with God. That's almost always down towards the bottom of the list. Uh, and, and yet this spiritual practice, spending time alone with God, it's, it's absolutely essential 
It's essential to building a resilient spirit and managing the stress in your life. Well then, you can't wait. <laughs> Taking too long. Prayer is actually a fantastic stress reliever. It's a fantastic stress reliever. Uh, prayer is like a decompression chamber. Uh, you you can release stress and and the stress of of keeping up appearances and living up to others' expectations. Prayer is. Is, is the place where you can unload your burdens and admit that you can't carry and do stuff all on your own. That's what prayer is. It's a simple spiritual practice, and it, and it does so much good. In prayer, we're reminded of, of, of the fact that God is willing and ready to help us with every situation, every stressful situation, every experience, every chaotic thing that we might have in our lives. So, the question that we have this morning is, is how do we develop that habit of spending time alone with God? Well, there are a number of different ways that habits are developed, um, but the best is they are developed through practice and repetition. In fact, most experts tell us that, that the best way to develop a habit is to do it seven times a day for seven days, whatever that is. And that is the, 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 the foundation of beginning that habit. Now, you still have to keep it up after seven days, right? But if you do something seven times a day for seven days, it begins to create in your, in your, in your mind, in your brain. Uh, these these receptors, these connectors that say, I need to do that again. I need to do that again. In order to function, I have to do it again. See, habits are, uh, it, it, it's something that happens regularly and consistently. Uh, Jesus developed spiritual habits. We see it in scripture. Uh, the Bible says that in, in Luke twenty-two thirty-nine. 39, that it was Jesus' habit to, to leave Jerusalem and go across to the Mount of Olives to pray. We see it happen multiple times. And here's our passage of scripture for today. Mark 1.35. Let me get it up here on the screen so you can see. Mark 1.35. Listen to this. It says, very early in the morning, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. See, Jesus was convinced that, that no matter how busy he was, no matter what he had going on, no matter how many people wanted his attention, he needed time alone with God, and specifically, time alone with God to pray. Do you have any time like that in your life? Do you have those moments? No. We need to develop those, don't we? Do you have those opportunities? Uh, we talked last night in our Wednesday night Bible study about uh, about the innkeeper. In fact, we don't see the innkeeper as a character uh, in Scripture. We see that there's no room at the end, so we assume there's an innkeeper. But I'm curious, what, what would happen if the innkeeper had a spiritual practice and, and he was connected to God? And so when Joseph and Mary showed up, he, did, he would just say, well, there's no room at the end. Uh, I wonder if he would have made room. We don't know. See, I think when we spend time alone with God and we get in touch and connection with him, uh, we're open to so much more of what he wants to do because we're tied, we're connected, we hear his voice. You ever slow down and, and get quiet before God so that, so that you can reflect and be renewed? Uh, if you want to be a resilient person, if you want to have less stress in your life, I believe that we have to develop the habit of spending time alone with God. Scripture says that, that while word spread about Jesus and, and huge crowds of people would follow him, they would want to come here, come near and hear him speak, Jesus made a time alone with God a habit. He had to. He had to. The Bible says Jesus often slipped away. Luke 5, 15. Jesus often slipped away so that he could pray. Not just every once in a while, not just when he thought he needed it. Often, it says. If Jesus felt the need to frequently leave, get away, and, and spend time alone with God, think how much more you and I need to do that. We need to do that. 
uh, experts say, doctors, uh, psychologists, people will say noise often causes stress. Too much noise, not loud sounds, but noise often causes stress. And if I want to do one thing to challenge you, and, and it, it, it's not just for you, it's for me too. I want to challenge you to start your mornings first with God. Yeah, you could read the Bible, you could pray. Start your first thing in the morning with God. As soon as you open your eyes and you're getting into that conscious state, good morning, Lord. Start your first thing instead of what a lot of us do. I'll be the first one to confess. We pick up our phone. We check the time. We check the weather. We check the news that we might have missed. We hop on social media, whatever. Right? We hop on right away. I want to challenge you. Instead of instead of doing that or turn on the TV or, or the radio, first thing, right off the bat, make it a habit to start opening your day with God. As soon as your eyes open, good morning, Lord. Thanks for a new day. Be still, be quiet. And in that, that moment, listen to the work that God wants you to do, what he wants you to accomplish. Make it a habit of meditating on his word and, and what he has in store for you. I think when we begin habits, forming habits that way, it will change our perspective for the entire day. Because the first thing that we're connected to is not the ugly news happening on our world, but it's what God is doing in your life. All right. That's all I got for you today. Hope you're off to a good start. There's Lily, she's saying bye. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, this weekend, Saturday, we have a homeless feeding. If you're available to, to help and you want to, 8.30 at the church. Uh, we're watching the weather. It's supposed to be kind of a soggy weekend. So be careful with that if you're going to be out traveling or doing whatever. What's that? Rainy, yeah, soggy. It's going to be a rainy weekend. Um, uh, and remember, this Sunday, uh, wear your ugly Christmas sweaters, shirts, whatever you got. Uh, this Sunday, we're going to be talking about ugly motives. Ugly motives. Looking forward to being together again, worshiping together again, and uh, lighting our third Advent candle. Uh, remembering, waiting, hoping, having peace and joy. All right, guys. Love you all. Appreciate you. If you need anything, reach out. Uh, and if not, uh, have a blessed and wonderful day. And remember, today, if you have the opportunity, I want to challenge you. Be a blessing because he's always a blessing to us, right? Love y'all. See ya. Take care. Bye-bye.